Hello to all my fellow Glorious Gaians. Thank you for joining me, Amber, on my channel, Guidance Through Gaia, where I do tarot readings. If this is your first time, welcome. And I hope that you find something useful or enjoyable in this message. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for giving me another shot to read for you. It is such an honor. Um, I hope y'all's days have started out fine because mine just ended up being like an episode of Jerry Springer. Uh, may he rest in peace. And so I'm a little bit like frazzled. But, you know, instead of like trying to focus on it, I decided I was going to do something that I enjoy and that I love to get me out of that crazy energy. <laughs> so what we are looking at today is where this connection is going. And we have three piles here. We have pile number one with card 22, butterfly manifestation, no, eh, metamorphosis. We have card number two with the number 32 and traffic cone caution number three finally is 26 with fence and boundaries um so a quick rundown of how we're going to do this and i might end up switching it depending on how it's going um these top cards are the energy of your connection as it stands and then we have two piles to represent you and to represent the other person. So I will refer to them as person A and person B. And so that's going to kind of give us an indication of like the kind of person this individual is and then like what they're going through in life, what their focus is. And so that should be able to help you identify, you know, if this is the correct pile for you. And then we are going to be getting into where this oh excuse me through tarot where this connection is headed um maybe looking at the reasons why or why not it's headed in a certain direction um cards from the universe describing what this connection is like you know i, I like using these cards these island time wellness love oracle cards um as a way for like us to connect with the universe and, and get like an objective opinion about what this connection is and then like, um, I'm gonna get a power statement card and then I'm gonna do some charms. I haven't done those for a while. So go ahead, pick a pile or two or three. Don't tell me what it is. I mean, like at the end, tell me what it is, but like, you know, it's like the root of the card thing. Pick a card, choose a card, don't tell me. Anyway, you get it. I'll see you there, bye. Hello, pile one. You chose the card 22, butterfly metamorphosis. And this is a reading on where this connection is going. But the butterfly card represents where the relationship is now, where the connection is currently. And it's going through a process of transition. Um, it could be a process of transitioning away from each other, or it could be a process of transitioning towards each other. Transition can be a very difficult experience, though change can be incredibly difficult if this is a relationship that's growing closer it can be kind of intimidating you know like what if things don't work out or <sighs> what is my life going to look like involving this person you know are we going to get along is it going to be great or Are there going to be complications? Are their friends going to like me? Is their family going to like me? You know, all those types of things. Because even though when we are moving towards another person that we're interested in and we're excited for that and we're happy for that, it can also be, it can be really scary. Um, what if my breath smells bad when I kiss them? Conversely, if you are transitioning away from each other, that can be a very painful situation. You know, you start to miss them and think like, you know, was there something that I did or something I could have done or why wasn't I good enough or am I going to be alone for forever? You know, getting into those really self-deprecating thoughts. Um, so how we're going to start this is we are going to have person A here and person B over here. Um, and we're going to go in depth into them. And it'll be up to you to kind of decide which person is you. Um, and 
What was I going to say? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. All of these cards here represent like the character of a person, their thoughts, what their priorities are right now, um, their perspectives, so that we can get a pretty well-rounded understanding of person A and person B. And I just feel like we can cover a lot of ground just with these cards. And that can give us an indication like that can shed light on when we get to the portion of like, where is this connection going? It can shed light potentially on why it's going down this path. And if we need further clarification, we got tarot here. Say hello to tarot. She lovely. All right. Um, so we have person A here who is represented by 28, the past. And the affirmation is I shine awareness and compassion on my past. Then we have card number 16, the pomegranate tree with wealth. Uh, complete harmony and the oneness of the universe attracts love and romance, family, and acquaintances. Actually, I do want that over here. We've got card number 36 with death, so another theme of change. And then we have card number 24 with accept and receive, but it is in the reverse. And then we're going to go on person B, who's represented by this card. And it says, the improviser, number 41, I, I effortlessly adapt to deal with unexpected circumstances. Um, we've got 35 and gratitude. 38, the mimosa tree with fulfillment, and it says might, activity, energy, and faithful enthusiasm bring the sure beauty of your objective. And then we have card number 33 with sacred mirror, and this one was upright. Now, one thing, there are many one things I kind of want to point out before we get too far into this. It's interesting. When I pre-shuffled these cards and laid them out, every single person A for all three piles had this from what is it the sacred i think it's like the sacred creators yeah the sacred creators oracle in reverse which is representative of a challenge and then every single person b throughout all three decks had the their card from the sacred creators oracle in the upright which tends to be like the gift um so it seems like whether you are person A or person B, pers the, the people who are represented by per people like person A are probably experiencing more hardships or maybe um, a little less optimistic. Maybe they're doubtful. And then it seems like people who are represented by pile B tend to be a little bit more optimistic, have a little bit more faith. Um, and that was just an interesting distinction to make. Also, with these two cards to start off with, I am going to start with person A going into depth. But there are a couple of differences that I think are fairly interesting. Um, so first of all, person A is represented by Cupid, by by a cherub, you know, like, and it's a baby, like, it's a, it's a young child, and person B is represented by an older man, probably, like, if I had to guess, I'd say he was in, like, his 50s, late 40s, mid 50s, maybe even early 60s, and so in this connection, one person may be older than another, or, um, one person may have more of a mature attitude, like, mentality or behavior than another, and another person might be a little bit more playful, or more childish, or it could be that maybe, you know, one person has more responsibilities that they are in charge of than the other person. I also notice that they are two different ethnicities. It's like we have this little white cherub over here, and then what looks to be a black man over here, although, yeah, I think he's black, but I could also see, like, what is it? Is it... West Asian, South Asian. Um, but so the two of you may have um, different ethnic backgrounds or you may have different cultural backgrounds. But let's get started with person A. So with this 
card here where we talk about the past. I shine awareness and compassion on my past. This may indicate that person A and person B have been involved with each other in the past. Um, maybe they have known each other for an extended period of time um, or did know each other and are kind of reuniting or maybe like their exes. Um, this person, I think, also really does heavily focus on the past. So in the story of this card, it talks about how how right. um, Cupid is approached by this entity that he thinks is like him. But really, it's just like it's, it's this creepy little head with wings and it's a, cher it's a cherub. And the cherub is coming to talk to Cupid about like, you know, you've been a little careless. And... You've had such a focus on love, but um, but you don't see like some of your actions have worked and some of your actions haven't. And so as this cherub is enlightening Cupid about this, Cupid begins to shift and change a little bit. He's growing up, his wings are getting smaller, and he's realizing like how his actions affect his circumstances and affect other circumstances. So person A, I think, has really heavily been focused on love, on romance. Maybe at times they um, have kind of dived right into relationships or... Um, not really taking the time to get to know the other person to see if, if they were going to be in alignment. Uh, they may have had several relationships that were very difficult. Um, and I think now they're reflecting upon that. They want to make decisions that are more conducive to, I think, finding someone or being someone who is more consistent and more stable um, hmm. and they're really taking the opportunity to look at their past and see like what worked and what didn't work and to learn from it. Now I think that has gone into this, that the transfers into this like death card and this is a talking about an ending. And this could mean if this is like, if pile A and pile B are exes, then this may talk about uh, an ending to this relationship. It could also be just kind of an ending, I feel like a little bit to their innocence, you know? I feel like this is somebody who kind of has lost the naivety and the innocence of their youth and is becoming a little bit more jaded. Uh, there could be circumstances within their life that are also changing. We have the accept and receive card, but it is in reverse, which indicates to me that this person's heart space is likely at a point where they're closing it off. I feel this person does have hopes for a long-term connection and for genuine love, but they may be feeling pessimistic about it. They may feel jaded about it. And so they're in a position where they're kind of, I think, rejecting romance right now or I just saw 11 11 angel numbers guys um they may be rejecting romance or they may be experiencing like negative self-talk about their capabilities to have a true honest stable relationship with somebody this could even be somebody who is just in a healthy way taking a break from romance to focus on themselves. It doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be representative of a negative cycle. But then we've got the pomegranate tree with wealth. So pomegranates relate to like fertility and um, abundance. So in the book, it talks about how the pomegranate tree is considered the tree of wisdom, I think, in the Garden of Eden. I don't know if that's the same as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, and so it's like kind of this idea of eating from 
the pomegranate can induce this higher understanding of how we can achieve our goals. The pomegranate is also a heavy symbol for Persephone, um, the goddess of the underworld and of fertility. She spends half the year down in the underworld with Hades. Um, it could, the stories differ, you know, either she was abducted or she went willingly. And then the other half of the year, <clears throat> she spends above ground. Um, and that's when we get like spring and summer. So, and it's, and you know, Persephone is often looked at as a, a two-sided goddess. You know, she's got like this darker quality to her, but she also has this, this lighter quality, you know, she's got the being the goddess of death, being the goddess of the underworld, but then she's also the goddess of fertility and abundance. And I think that's really talking about how this person is kind of trying to learn how to balance themselves out. And it's interesting because we also have here with the complete harmony and the oneness of the universe attracts love and romance, family and acquaintances. And I think that they're really trying to understand that. I think this is something that intellectually they know, but they're having to learn how to practice this, you know, um, learning how to balance themselves and kind of relinquish control to the universe with the trust that they will attract what it is that they're looking for. And then we've got person B, okay? This is represented by someone called the improviser. And it says, I effortlessly adapt to deal with unexpected circumstances. And it seems like person B is not as quite, as in quite a serious situation. Uh, they're a little bit more lighthearted. They um, are kind of just like hanging out playing their flute and it talks about making music for the sake of the love of it you know and not for any gain so this person could be someone who was like a musician or very artistic and it's interesting that we have the um butterfly wings on this individual um and then the butterfly metamorphosis card for the overall energy of where this connection is right now so it makes me feel that this person is directly connected to the change that they are the one who initiated it whether it seems as if they are getting closer or wanting to get closer or as if they maybe are departing this card also does talk about how this person brings in life and music but that he also kills for food you know he hunts and kills for food and he has like this little knife there um and it talks about how he also asks for forgiveness for doing this so this is somebody that is <clears throat> someone who honors life you know they could be like native american or indigenous um or another from another um culture or religion where like the sanctity of life and the honoring of that sanctity is very heavily expressed this person understands that everybody has a purpose and has meaning in life and that they're all important and he only takes what he needs and even then you know he understands that in order to survive like someone or something else had to perish and he doesn't take that lightly um and it's interesting that he's called the improviser because it also talks about adapting to circumstances and Reading this card, I think of like how adapting and improvising are similar, but there seem to, I feel like there are differences between them. I feel adapting to a circumstance is a passive expression. Um, it's like we kind of change things about ourselves to fit into the mold and to not like disrupt the flow of the environment. But someone who is improvising is doing something like externally to yes exist in harmony with their surroundings but also to make an impact you know this is a person who is very quick-witted they're very observant um they they notice um qualities in people or in circumstances and how they're being affected and they're not 
shy about trying right. something new. And this is a person who wants to contribute in a way that is beneficial to everybody. I also think it's really beautiful. We have with the gratitude card, the improviser card, and the mimosa tree, there's like this heavy purplish pink. Is it called mauve? I don't remember if it's mauve. Um, color. And like the heart chakra is green, if I remember correctly. Um, and with this being closer to purple, this could symbolize like a spiritual connection or like, you know, um, someone who, even if they aren't spiritual, may have a closer relationship with their intuition. But I do also think that this shows like, it reminds me of rose quartz. Yeah, like rose quartz. Um, it's kind of like that. It's a little bit different, a little bit deep, darker, but you know, so I think this is somebody who has a lot of compassion and love for everyone and everything, including themselves. And then we have the gratitude card. I think this is someone who is thankful for every experience that they have. You know, they may go through painful things that could upset them or could make them sad or scared, but I think they are pretty in control of their emotions and even at times where they haven't been they're able to reflect upon it and see that there was a reason that something happened or you know how they can take control of that narrative and like use it to better themselves and use it to learn um I think this is a this is someone who is very grateful for this connection um, grateful for every opportunity they've been given, thankful for every opportunity that they have been rejected from. And they, they just kind of look at the, at the experience of life as a totality, like, you know, the big picture of how it, like every little thing fits in. Um, we have sacred mirrors and this one is upright. And so this person is able to kind of, they're able to really I identify with people you know, they could be somebody who is rich and they could meet somebody who is homeless. You know, somebody who shows something very different, who's living a life very different from themselves. And yet they'll still have that compassion and that empathy for that person. They'll be able to find common ground. You know, maybe there was a time when they didn't have anything or maybe there was a time when someone else helped them out. Or maybe, you know, he finds or she finds or they find another way to connect to this, you know, hypothetical homeless person like finding out that um i don't know this this person sustained a severe injury i just saw 2020 um you know and they weren't able to pay for it and like their house got foreclosed and all that stuff and this person b could look at them and understand like oh yeah like i got into a really really traumatic accident too like I didn't think I was gonna be able to walk um, they told me that I would never walk again and that person B is gonna be able to look at the situation and understand like they're the same people intrinsically you know we're all human beings and we all have experiences and that this homeless person was at a huge disadvantage in their life you know and that's why now they're in this position meanwhile person b can look at themselves and understand like you know i'm grateful because like i did have support you know i had really good insurance um you know i come from a wealthy family and so they're able to see like that they're not better than anybody else circumstances are different and people can go through similar things but have different experiences you know if that makes sense um and again i think that's like the sacred mirror i think really also shows how personable they are and how how in tune with themselves and with others they are so where that they can like they can see the differences and they can find the beauty in them but they can also see the similarities and recognize that, like, you know, and maintain that sense of humility. And then we have the mimosa tree with fulfillment. And I think that's honestly the, per like, the goal that this purpose, 
the, the goal that this person has is just to feel fulfilled. And they look for that in a lot of different ways. They may look for that financially, but I think they primarily look at that through experiences. Um, I think there's somebody who is well-traveled, who has a diverse group of acquaintances and friends, somebody who likes to help others. I think they find fulfillment in like gaining experiences and being able to contribute positively to society. Whew, that's a lot. So we've got two pretty different energies here. Um, although I do see a similarity where like pile, like person B is I think really They're already adept at kind of learning from the past because they're able to, to, I think, be highly observant and intuitive in the present. And if they weren't always like that, then I think that they're able to reflect on the past and see things pretty clearly, pretty easily. Um, I think person A is trying to go through that and there's like a certain... Person A seems like they have a lot of walls up right now. <clears throat> and they could be unhealthy walls. They could be healthy walls. Person B seems like they are pretty open. Um, so we are going to see where this connection is headed. And this is based upon the current energy. You know, I do think that results can always change, whether it's like they improve or they degrade. You know, especially when we're looking at situations that involve another person, like we have to take into account that they have free will also and things can change in their life. Their perspectives can change. Okay, so we have the hanged man in reverse. So where this connection is headed. The emperor. Where is this connection headed? The Seven of Swords. I think I want to do five cards. The King of Pentacles. We've got the Eight of Swords in reverse, but then the Ace of Swords clarifying that in reverse. Hmm. Okay. I am, <clears throat> I'm going to get some clarifying cards, but I'm going to express what I see right now, which is, you know, the Hanged Man in reverse can talk about coming out of complacency, you know, um, making a change <clears throat> because in reverse the hanged man can be somebody who has spent the time looking for a different perspective been in that stillness been meditating and now he or she or they are coming out um with more of a decisive mentality it does seem like because we've got the Emperor and the King of Pentacles, both very heavily masculine energies. And so it seems like the person who's going to have the most control in this situation is going to be the person who is more heavily masculine. Um, doesn't mean that they have to be a man or identify as a man, but someone who has the more masculine energy. We've got this Eight of Swords in reverse. Which can talk about coming out of a prison, like, you know, breaking free from the limitations that we have placed upon ourselves. But then the Ace of Swords in reverse can talk about something that's been hidden. It could be, too, ah, a concern that there is something, you know, like kind of breaking free of having this mentality of, like, something isn't right or something's going to go wrong. Um and overcoming that 
But then we have the Seven of Swords energy. And the Seven of Swords is a, is a manipulative energy. It's a self-serving energy. And it's a deceptive energy, typically. So let's see what this Seven of Swords is about. <sighs> this Nine of Pentacles in reverse and the Six of Cups in reverse. And like I like the last time I used this deck for a video, I mentioned that the Seven of Swords is a little bit different from the majority that I've seen because the majority of the decks that have them, you know, in their illustrations of this card show someone running away with the swords, you know, as if that person is the one being manipulative. But in this deck, this woman is running from the swords. And we've got the Nine of Pentacles in reverse with the Six of Cups in reverse. And that feels like It feels like this destruction of like a, a, an independent foundation as what the Nine of Pentacles would indicate. You know, the Nine of Pentacles is someone who has everything all nice and tidy for them you know they feel comfortable they're in a position where it's like yeah they can't accept someone into their life but they don't need anybody and then the six of cups is typically like a, a reminiscent card you know it indicates things of the past and in and in the reverse it can talk about being stuck on the past so i kind of feel like this card is talking about It feels like a level of codependency. And I'm not sure if it's like codependency that will occur or is occurring or if it's like a fear of codependency. You know, because sometimes people can be hyper-independent. Um, they may be like have a fear of commitment because they're afraid of relying on somebody. Let's get what this hanged man in reverse energy is about. What's this hanged man in reverse? The tower, which is a change card. Wow. So it seems like there's been some clarity about the reality of the situation. And so it does feel like what, for a lot of you, this may be a connection that is ending. Um, or a connection that is going in a direction that isn't romantic. And someone, and I feel like it's person A, someone may have, maybe feeling like, the rose-colored glasses have been removed and seeing the situation like, oh, it's not turning into what I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought we were together, or I thought this person was interested in me, and now there's like this doubt about that. So what do we have for the Emperor card? Like, what's the energy behind the Emperor card? The Eight of Wands with the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so that's talking about an offering coming in soon. You know, the Eight of Wands is a very action-oriented card. 
It's about movement and it is fast movement and the Page of Pentacles is physically someone coming in and being like, yo, I'd like to make an investment. And it's not the most emotional investment, you know, um, but it's like a practical investment. And it could be, you know, a situation where it's like, yeah, I want to be friends. Like, I'm not ready to make this romantic. Um, or I don't have those romantic feelings for you at this point in time, but I'm interested in seeing where they go. Or it could be like someone just shutting the other person down and going like, a relationship, a romantic relationship is not going to happen between us. And then what's this King of Pentacles card about? Strength. Yeah, so this masculine energy really does have the power over the situation. They have kind of put their foot down about something. I'm going to get... And then the Ten of Wands in reverse, that can be about releasing a burden. And so I feel that what this, what the story that's playing out here is that someone's coming out with a different perspective. And you know, for some of you, it might not be about seeing that this connection is falling apart. It could be a coming out a different perspective of like how how this impacts you, or how or well, how it impacts them, or how like serious it was. Like sometimes, you know, we might get really emotional and like think something is the end of the world, and later we're able to reflect upon it and see like, oh, it wasn't quite that big of a deal. Um, but there's a different perspective about change here that feels or felt traumatic. This emperor energy coming in hot and fast with a very practical offer. You know, something beginning. You know, and we see we have the buds up here. Um, the seven of swords... Just feeling like a sense of codependency. Or even like feeling abandoned. This King of Pentacles kind of maintaining their ground. I want to see what this Strength card is about. Like what is this King of Pentacles being strong in regards to... judgment yeah they're very much in this in this in the face of like I've made my decision or this is how I perceive the situation and then the eight of swords in reverse is letting go I feel like it means like let Letting go of, like, the uncertainty of how difficult it will be, you know? And so it's like, because the Ace of Swords in Reverse is about, like, not having the truth. And then the Ten of Wands is about, like, the release, the burden. Is there anything else... You want to tell us about the future of this connection. The Three of Pentacles in reverse. I don't know if I want to take all of these. Maybe I do. The Eight of Cups, the Two of Wands, the King of Wands, the Hermit, the Three of Swords, and the Fool. So, yeah, we'll put these like this. The Eight of Cups, clarified by the Two of Wands. 
the Hermit with the King of Wands, Three of Swords with the Fool. Um, what I really feel is that this is indicating that there's going to be a separation between the two of you. That whoever is the person that's well, it could be either one. No, no, I'm going to stand by this. I feel like the person who has really desired this, this union um, is going to be walking away from it because this King of Wands, another masculine energy, has gone into hermit mode, has gone into hiding, you know, has pulled back. And there's like this feeling of loss over a new beginning you know maybe maybe this masculine energy has connected with somebody else there could be a third party situation doesn't have like you know it doesn't have to be a, a person um that's third party oh but look at this we've got the ace of wands with the nine of cups upright on the back of the deck, which means that you are going to have an opportunity to experience and create emotional fulfillment for yourself. So let's get some, I feel like we probably already have a lot of information regarding this topic, but let's get some messages from the universe about the reality of this connection. What's the reality of this connection, universe? Okay. Self-indulgence. Focus on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, and self-appreciation. We've got boat with receiving what you need, progression arriving, moving on, closure issues. Sunglasses with watching, looking, stalking, gaslighting, perception, focusing out, but it was in reverse. And then keys on a ring, many options, decision, unconventional, string along, one night stand. Um, so this is a message that I get time and time again in my own experience. And I, it's, it's so frustrating. I know, but the universe is saying like, this is really a time for you to walk away from the situation because it's not benefiting you. And it's a good time for you to work on healing and learning to love yourself and learning to appreciate yourself and really go through the wounds. Like you may have been You may be somebody who struggles with codependency or you're afraid because of like, if you are person A of going back into the past and repeating these cycles of codependency. Sunglasses indicates to me that for one, this person isn't really keeping an eye on you. They're not somebody who is focused on you. They're more focused on themselves. And it's also a reminder from the universe, like not to keep tabs on this person and then keys on a ring many options decision unconventional string along one night stand i do feel that this is also a dual message that this person may not have considered you a serious option um also you do have a multitude of options beyond this person like this is oops this is not a situation where like this is the one shot you're ever going to get and because this person kind of sucks or is incompatible i'm gonna say their energy sucks a little bit like there's i don't know there's if they weren't completely open about what they were looking for and what they weren't looking for and then they just had this laissez-faire attitude of like oh well it just wasn't anything serious i need to move on um then then they do kind of suck you know, if we were the ones who kind of got in our own heads and created this whole fantasy life with them and then they were like, oh, no, then they don't suck as much. But the situation still sucks. So we're going to see what power statement the universe has for you. I was really trying to get this to be a shorter reading than what it's turning out to be, but I'm, I'm okay with it. What power statement do you want to provide for group one? Engagement. 
Today I make the conscious choice to engage with the world in an active way. I'll take a new route and talk to strangers. I will smell flowers and pet dogs and maybe walk around barefoot for a while if I'm not inside of 7-Eleven. At the very least, I'll have a day that's slightly more interesting than average. And at the most, I'll have a startling epiphany or make a friend who will change my life forever. No pressure. And then you've got like this little fish and this octopus right there. So definitely when we go through like heartbreaking situations, and especially if you're person A, it's very easy to close ourselves away, you know, and there are times when we do need to go into hiding for a little bit so we can process things and get away from the world and um, balance out. But it's also really important to make sure that you are still engaging with life. And it can be very helpful to go and do things that you don't normally do um, or just kind of be in the moment and stay present and enjoy the small things in life like, you know, the taste of a coffee that you enjoy or petting a dog like this. Because it can help get you out of that frame of mind of like, I've lost this, you know, or I'm not good enough for this, or is this ever going to happen for me? Um, and it can bring you along the path of somebody who will be an important person in your life, whether that's like a friend, um, a mentor, or, you know, a lover. So we're just going to get a few charms, a few more. Okay. So we have Pisces. Um, one of you could have Pisces in your chart in a really significant manner. Uh, I also think about like the dual nature of Pisces and Pisces are considered like very psychic people. Um, so it may be an encouragement for you to like connect with the universe. Music. Um, hmm. If the person we're talking about is person B, Music might be kind of a rough topic if they do engage in it. But it might also be like if you are somebody who really connects with music, it might be a good time for you to listen to some music. Whether it's like you need to listen to music that kind of details your situation so you can cry and get it out. Or maybe you need to listen to some upbeat music. Could involve also going to a concert or attending a symphony. You know bear and I think of a bear as somebody who is like really durable you know they've got this thick coat um and you know like the bear blubber on them and they can survive like colder temperatures and um they're very strong very big animals typically won't attack you unless they're like ill or hungry or feel threatened and they're able to travel long distances you know they're very persevering and then we have this flower with a pearl in the middle and that to me symbolizes blooming you know when a flower is in its budding stage you don't really know what it's gonna look like like I mean if you know what the flower is you probably do but it, there could be variations but it's like this flower if you allow it to um, bloom there's there's gonna be like this pearl in the middle of it you know something the flower itself is already beautiful and valuable you know, but the pearl is like just something extra that you wouldn't expect. So group number one, I hope that this was helpful for you. If you resonated with it, I would love to hear how in the comment section down below. I would also greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button on this video so I can get a little bit more exposure out there. Add some new peeps to our family. Um, speaking of which, if you haven't already and you're interested, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so as to be alerted as to whenever I upload a new video. And if you're interested in receiving a private reading from yours truly, you can find my contact information in the description box down below. Oh, wait. There's also a letter. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so writing something out may be beneficial, like maybe writing a letter to yourself or um, writing a letter to this person. Like there are times when I've had to write letters to someone and I don't actually give it to them. I might just like destroy it or burn it or keep it. But it's journaling could be a really good way to um, get yourself like in a better space emotionally and mentally it this could also be indicative of like reaching out to someone or expecting communication like and the fact is like there's two hearts on here you know so i think you're going to be potentially receiving communication from a prospective love partner if you open yourself up to it and it may be somebody that you meet online um 
but it could also be an acquaintance. I feel like it could be an acquaintance too. Somebody that you're around but you may not know very well. Um, they may write you a letter or they may send you an email or if they get your phone number for whatever reason, they may text you. So there are prospective possibilities coming up for you, Pile One. Um, I know it sucks when the person that you feel connected with you know, it all falls apart. And grieving is a natural process and it is healthy, but just keep your head up because someone, you're going to meet someone, you know, you are worth it. All right. Bye. Hey, pile number two. If you chose the card 32 traffic cone with caution, then this is going to be a reading for you on where this connection is going. So, um, let's get started. I'm really super stoked. Just remember that energies can change, especially when there is another person involved. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, take what resonates for you, leave the rest. And, and you know, I, that's said so often throughout various channels, but I do feel that it's like such an important truth. Like, especially when we're doing, like, collective readings, there's going to be a lot of energies mixed into it. And I look at it as, like, the overarching theme of the reading is what's meant to and what's more likely to apply to the greater whole. But, like, the fine print um, may be different. But how we're going to be doing this right now, I, I did, I think I left the information in the intro, but um, we're going to be using the traffic cone to look at uh, the overall energy of where the connection is at this point. And then we're gonna have uh, person A and person B described respectively with these cards. So with the traffic cone caution, that is, I feel, indicating that there is maybe like a little bit of intimidation in this connection or a little bit of potentially skepticism you know when we're when we see traffic cones it's because there is work being done and the traffic cones are meant to line us on the path that we can travel safely but keep us away from the areas that are being worked upon and, and therefore dangerous and so you know, especially when like traffic is heavy or there are adverse weather effects or also like during the evening, it can be very important to be approaching, you know, or traveling through these areas, maybe a little bit more slowly and with more attention. I just thought two, two, two. Um, I don't know if that's like really important for anybody, but like when I see repeating numbers or like mirrored numbers, I do think about it. So, and you know, maybe it means something to you guys. But, you know, because if we're just driving recklessly through, we might miss the detour. We might run into a traffic cone. We um, might enter into an area that is the part of the road that is being worked upon. And so traffic cones are there to, like, guide us safely through a transition and so in this connection I think that there is a level of progress you know there is something that is moving forward um but there is this sense of kind of like trepidation like you know is this too good to be true is this going to work out or maybe even like you know how quickly should we pursue this? Um, trying to keep an eye out for like any red flags or warning signs. So this could be a connection where like it's newer and you're just getting to know this person more intimately or if this is a long-standing connection, one where it may be rocky, you know, and it may be in like a, a difficult situation and so you and or this partner are trying to figure out like how can you safely navigate this like if there's a conflict um you know 
is the connection reconcilable or is it going to be best to part ways? Or if you have parted ways already, but then there's a self for 20. <laughs> um, if, if you have parted ways previously, maybe someone is trying to re-engage within the connection. And so maybe there's like this, this feeling of, should I explore this opportunity again? Should I reconcile with them again? Or should I try to, um, if so, like, how should we go about doing this? I know it can be kind of intimidating to see, like, a traffic cone. And a lot of times, the reason why I will use cards um, or other ways that don't necessarily have any indication as to, like, what they're about. Like, I tend to use these cards uh, from the Intuition Oracle. Because even though they have images, like, they don't really indicate what the card is about. Because there can be, like, this mental bias of, like, we see a traffic cone caution. And if that's not, like, what we want to hear about a connection, we might, without awareness, not choose that pile. Even if, it, though, it does have, like, a meaning for us. Um, but all in all, like, a traffic cone being cautious... Having delays isn't intrinsically a negative thing. So we're gonna, I don't know why I'm trying to throw this off. Like it's, I need to use like some, some wipes or something. So dirty. Anyway, um, so we're gonna be looking at person A and feel free to decide like which one you are, which one the other person is. There may be qualities that you share between the two of them. Um, just use your discernment. This is more so to like, help you assess if this is the correct pile for you. Um, also to help indicate like where each person is in their life and their nature as a, as a human. And um, it can even present like if they're experiencing any complications or if they have certain goals and that can be kind of an indication when we get into like where this connection is heading as to why it's heading in that situation. So for person A, we have this card and it's titled 14, the manifester. And it says, I am manifesting what I see in my mind's eye. We have card number 20 with divinity. Mm. We have card number 49, the tea tree. No, the tea, sorry, the tea tree superiority and it says the un unswerving direction of your inner being is that of self-renewal being anew at every ending i just got these three cards so i'm like really excited to use them and then we have make a mission statement for your soul number 58 but it's in reverse and then i am going to lay out person b as well um may make any connections that like stand out right away between the two of them but i will start otherwise with reading the profile of person a we have this card for person b and it says 31 the partners um i keep my word and put my partnership first in all ways we have card number nine with shift And card number 51, the tulip tree adaptability. The transform the transforming power of time brings flowers and fruits that are a sign of love and happiness. And then card number seven with choose who you are becoming. Um, so one thing that I did mention in pile one was that interestingly enough, everyone, every every person. A, through all three piles, what their creator, what is it, the sacred creator's oracle, which is this one down here, had theirs in reverse, which typically talks about a challenge. Every person B throughout all three piles for their sacred creator's oracle had their card upright, which signifies like a gift. So it seems that throughout all three groups, pile A indicates like the represents people who may be struggling more or worried more um whereas you know and they may be the people who are 
I would say maybe more passive in the connection, potentially. Whereas people B um, might feel more confident and be maybe like the initiators of things. One thing I did forget to mention in pile one though um, has to do with the tree cards. So within this within this deck, um, it's the magic oracle, the tree magic oracle deck. Um, there are two two like suits, and so you have the earth suit and then the tree suit. Wait, no, I'm sorry, that was dumb. <laughs> the earth suit and the heaven suit and uh both of these cards actually the teak tree and the tulip tree um are part of the heaven suit and so that may indicate something in regards to like spirituality um divine connections I still don't completely understand the deck because I have a tendency of just like jumping right in without reading the actual books completely. Um, but it is, seems to me that the earth deck is more about like physical materialistic gains or losses and the heavenly deck is, well heavenly suit is more about like spiritual, um, or emotional things, you know, things that aren't necessarily tangible. So going from there, the manifester, this is somebody who is incredibly creative and constantly has a vision for what they want their life to look like. And I feel as if recently they have, or maybe not recently, <clears throat> but I feel that they have begun to really shift their reality into what their dream is you know i think this person tends to be very specific they have an idea of how they want to represent themselves um what kind of family they want to have if they want one what kind of house they'd like to have what kind of job they'd like to have and it's very i think heavily curated um <clears throat> at times this person may be more of a daydreamer it's all 11 44 i'm just gonna say all the numbers um, but I don't think it's in such a way that it's detrimental to how they live their physical life. I think that it can pose an obstacle because they may get frustrated if they don't see their manifestations coming into fruition. 12, 12. Oh my God. I need to stop looking at the timer because, <laughs> um, they may get frustrated with that, but overall, I do feel that this is somebody who is also very present in the physical world and is not only just like asking the universe to deliver this perfect image of a lifestyle to them, but is also willing to work very hard to achieve that. And that may be part of the reason why um, they may experience frustration is because at times they may get upset that like, you know, I'm, I'm working towards this. Like I'm putting in the effort. I'm not being passive about what I want in life. Um, and yet I'm still not receiving it. But overall, I think they are doing really well. There was something about these urns. I don't remember what it was. Um, one thing I will say is that with these two urns at like the riverbank, I think that's a riverbank, um, there's a possibility that they've undergone like an immense change right now, but they've had to leave something behind or that something has left their life. Hmm. And with this swan, you know, the swan has... A flower in its mouth and a lot of times when we look at swans swans are representative of true love because swans mate for life um like a lot of birds well I don't know how many birds I think penguins mate for life too but anyway and typically when you see like 
a representation of like soulmates coming into union and they're like the swan is the symbol of it you'll see two swans together i think it's really interesting that we have just the woman like the human woman and then the swan and so i think this true love you know is where pile a is is primarily focused at this point they may have achieved already a lot of the other manifestations that they've wanted in their life and now this may be like just the next step but they don't necessarily know who this person is in the book it does also indicate that the representation of the swan coming down this river indicates that their true love is near um we've got the divinity card here and so I think this is somebody who is very spiritual. This is somebody who probably does have their own kind of practice, whether they do like spell work or whether they pray um, or meditate. This is somebody who I do feel finds meaning in life and, and, and how it can be attached to spirituality. Uh, so they are likely a person who does believe that um, someone or something out there is listening to them. Or that if they shift like the frequency of their energy that they can attain different results um, or that like things happen for a reason now this is a seven-pointed star and it's also called the fairy star um, or that I think it's also called the seven gram um, so they may be somebody who works with like a lot of earth magic if they do utilize earth well if they do utilize magic at all Oh, excuse me. Then we have the teak tree superiority. Um, I think that's a really oh, interesting concept, superiority. Uh, this person may be somebody who does like to have control over their life. They may not be somebody who um, who... Hmm. is comfortable like shrinking themselves to fit into someone else's space. Uh, this could be somebody who is very strong-willed. There's also something about teak tree oil. I cannot remember the purpose of teak tree oil. But that may be something to look into. But it says, the unswerving direction of your inner being is that of self-renewal. Begin anew at every ending. And we talked about endings with these urns. And so even if this person is somebody who gets dismayed, I feel as if at some point in their life, they kind of just like shake it off. And they, it's almost like resetting the chapter. You know, like if there's a job that falls through, um that they thought that they were going to get, you know, that they really wanted. They might be somebody who gets really downtrodden about that and maybe sulks about it for a while. Um, maybe struggles with like, what did I do wrong? Or like, how could they not choose me? But at the end of the day, like they're going to pick themselves back up and they're going to be like, okay, reset. And it might be that they just... Maybe they try to apply for that position again with that company, or maybe they shift entirely. And like, there's this, I think this birth of confidence that, you know, it might not be infallible. It might not be like at a hundred percent when they do resets, but you know, it's going to be stronger than what a lot of other people may be able to do. And then we have the, um, make a mission statement for your soul card in reverse. And this imagery is of like a mountain peak and a road winding toward it and like a sun peaking from behind the mountain. And so it's almost as if like this person, person A may not be entirely aware of where they're going um, or what life is going to offer them or maybe even like how to achieve what it is that they want. Because even though they are someone who um one of these cards talks about it you know being oh i think it's it's the manifester you know they're um oh yeah i think that's what the urns meant 
Urns and the Peacocks. The Peacocks, it was talking about how are both beautiful, but can be really intimidating. Um, but the Manifestor card talks about being both in the right and left brain. So person A is able to be somebody who is creative and innovative, but also somebody who is rational and logical. You know, somebody who can imagine what it is that they want and then pursue to make it happen. But there may be something, especially if it's like in the romantic department, that they may not know necessarily how to acquire because it involves another person. Like it's not something that they can entirely control. And that may have been a source of frustration for them. Um, and they may have undergone a period or may be undergoing a period where with this card, like the sun peeking behind the mountain, but it's in reverse, they may not have, they may be a little dubious of getting their hopes up or being too optimistic about a situation because they've been let down in the past. And then we have person B represented by the partners and it says, I keep my word and put my partnership first in all ways. And this is a really interesting card. There is so much to digest here. First of all, we have this tower. Um, this person may play chess. Um, maybe very logical, but, but you know, you can also look at it as like, They've undergone like a tower moment if we're thinking in regards to tarot or that like they've been kind of on the lookout or they're constantly observing. Um, another interesting thing that was between this card and person B for pile one is that both of these cards have... Um, a butterfly and a lot of the cards in the deck do but in both pile one and pile two person a has not had a butterfly represented in their imagery but person b has and so it's almost as if person b is currently undergoing this transformation or is looking for a transformation you know you see how this this light shines like almost through the butterfly onto this guy right here. And so it's it, with that and along with his posture where he's kind of like got his back to this woman um, and she's kind of looking at him in like deference or whatever. Um, this seems like somebody who really wants to stand out. Um, somebody who wants to provide. In the book it talks about how this woman behind is touching the man on his shoulder to offer him like comfort and peace. And the man only has his back to her because he's looking for a flower to place in her hair. Like there is absolute respect between the two of them and they support and love each other. I think this can indicate that this person B may um, be very well balanced in their feminine and their masculine. It could also mean I think that they feel... They feel most aligned with their purpose when they are in a partnership. And I think this is somebody who does want to not control somebody, not be in charge of somebody, but, but be the person that can be at the forefront and be a protector of someone. Um, be a person, a partner that their partner knows they can trust um, and who has respect for them. You know, and there's like, it's interesting because for the manifesto, this card talks about how this woman is dressed in kind of like shabby clothing, which indicates that she's impoverished a little bit, but then her dreams are so extravagant. But then in this card, the book talks about this couple being clothed in like royal attire, especially this guy. So there may be a difference between the two individuals um, in their like socioeconomic statuses or their careers. Um, there may also be like an ethnic or cultural difference because we have this white girl here. And then 
this black or Asian man and woman right here. Um, getting into it though, there's this shift card, number nine. And so I think this guy, it, this guy, I think pile or person B is experiencing a shift in their life. And it's interesting that we have this because this it's, it's, it's a mirror of it, you know? So it's kind of like potentially there were aspects of their life that previously they had respected or that they weren't necessarily, that wasn't problematic. But this shift is like elevating those aspects of what they wanted to a higher degree. So it could be like, hey, I liked my job at this firm, but now I got, you know, and I didn't have a problem with being in this position. It worked just fine, but now I got a promotion. You know, or like, Um, I was looking for a house over in this part of town and it would have been just fine, but I found another house that I can get that's in like this really beautiful location, you know? So it seems like they've always kind of aligned with their life and, and they were satisfied with it, but they're ex experiencing this shift that is allowing them to maintain those expectations and those patterns but in like an elevated way the shift card it's like a bow tie is also related i think it's like a nordic rune a norse rune and it's the last of like this traditional rune set and it means day or daybreak which is really interesting because we have the sunlight here and so it's like the dawn coming after the night you know so they may have been going through a very stressful period of time in their life. And now they're kind of experiencing a shift in that where things are starting to look up. And then we have 51, the tulip tree with adaptability. And the transforming power of time brings flowers and fruits that are a sign of love and happiness. So it's interesting that both, like we have all these cards that talk about transformation. You know, and I feel like this person <clears throat> potentially is more in terms of their life, more active, like they may be pursuing their goals more intently. And this person, I feel like maybe isn't someone who has such specific requirements for how their life is supposed to look and they may be somebody who is well like we have the adaptable card here um and maybe somebody who is not putting as forth much effort into changing their life as person a but not because like they're lazy or anything it's just because 27 27 um i just feel weird i don't know i feel i feel weird when i do that but like i know it matters to some people so that's why i make funny voices <laughs> Um, but it's not that they're lazy or unambitious. It's just that I don't think they need their life to look exactly one way. And yet, like, and I, I, I see this person as being a little less flexible and this person being far more flexible, but on the same token, it's almost like this person for as much as like as rigid as they are and as much as they want things to be a certain way i think they want to feel confident enough in a connection to where they can let that control go a little bit and even though this person um isn't necessarily someone who is like a take charge leader type of person in their everyday life i think they do want to show a potential partner that they are someone who is strong and capable and responsible and can be can be trusted and can be relied upon um and then choose who are you choose who oh another thing about the tulip tree um so tulips make me think of the netherlands so that may be significant to some and they're also just like a really happy spring tiny um spring tiny 
flowers. So, um, like, I don't know. I We're talking about trees here. And I guess the tree looks like a tulip. Maybe that's why it's called that. But um, with the flowers of tulips, it might be significant around, like, springtime. And then we have choose who you are becoming. And so I think this person is at a little bit of a crossroads. And this they may be experiencing a time where they are becoming more proactive in their life. Because maybe they kind of got in a, in a rut previously or they were content or there just wasn't a lot changing in their life. And I think now they're at a point where things kind of are changing. And so they it's kind of woken them up. And they are like, okay, so I have to figure out, like, how I'm going to fit this into my life as it is. What's going to change? Where I want to go? How do I get there? And it's both of these are travel cards. And so it's really interesting because we have the person who's more passive over here who has a card indicating that they are taking more charge of their life and the person who is more assertive who is struggling to figure out like where do I go from here so um whew. you know it's always kind of fun doing these because like with all these oracle cards um because it's like there's so much you information you can garner from them that otherwise you may not expect. And that can be something that, you know, changes depending upon the other cards. Just like with tarot that are surrounding it. You know, the story can shift a little bit. There can be connections you would make that you wouldn't otherwise do. And, you know, we have like these pinkish themes right here in red. Um, and then like this green card over here and I mean the trees are green but it's just there's almost kind of like this balance between this portion being the similar color scheme and this portion being the similar color scheme so it could be working on like I think it's the sacral chakra maybe the solar plexus and then like the heart chakras chakra all right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to look at the direction in which this connection is going. Where it's headed. So where is group two's connection headed? We've got the eight of pentacles in reverse. You know, and when it's upright, the Eight of Pentacles is all about mastery. Oh, look at this. We have the sun, you guys. We have the sun. That's so beautiful. Um, so with the Eight of Pentacles being in reverse, I take that as like, you know, there's some uncertainty about how to develop a practical foundation, you know, but it's it's a work in progress. All right, so we have the High Priestess. All right, can we get some more cards, universe? Okay, I'm gonna take them. I don't know. We've got the Lover's card. So much Major Arcana right now. Wow. With the Page of Wands and the Page of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. I kind of want to get one more card for the main theme. You guys, I love this for you. The Four of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles. Overall, this is really headed in a beautiful direction. Um, we do have a couple of the Pentacles here down in reverse. And so to me, that's just like still a process of building a strong foundation. You know, I, I think the both of you are kind of learning how to do this. 
Um, I, I do want to get a clarifier on that. What's this Eight of Pentacles in reverse energy? Hmm. The tower. There may be some apprehension around like a lack of experience or a lack of foundation and if that's going to be problematic um, or that maybe trying to lay something more practical down might disrupt the flow of the relationship because when we are first entering into a connection it's very easy to like get over in our heads you know we've got all of these hormones running through us cortisol serotonin dopamine norepinephrine and then the longer we get to know somebody there's oxytocin um and we're not always reasonable in the very beginning and we're very much focused on like the feelings you know like how this person makes us feel physically mentally emotionally spiritually and so but then like the practical aspects of of life and of planning can seem kind of intimidating or they might be kind of like on the back end such as story of like you know two people get together and all of a sudden they're spending all their time together and they may be neglecting their other friends or they may not hang out with their friends unless their partner is with and that can be kind of a disruption a lot of times I think those things usually kind of even out because that puppy love kind of settles down and we get a little bit more rational. Um, there may be a fear that though, that that this isn't going to, with this caution and traffic on sign, maybe result in a strong connection like maybe it's going to fall through or um yeah I just I feel like it's kind of like this this or you know it could be that this is just going to really um, affect the stability of both parties' lives, and that doesn't have to be a bad thing, you know. Um, although I will note that this, I, I think, I look at it more as a fear right now because this image is not the usual depiction of the tower, which is literally a building that is falling apart. It's a person who is, like, in the fetal position and who looks very distressed. So I think that's a fear um, that they're that the connection is going to disappear before there can be like any real stability established. But then we've got the sun. Let's see what the sun is about. Hmm. The three of pentacles in reverse with the two of swords in reverse. It does also seem like Everything is kind of working without having to intentionally, like, and, well, to be present in the decisions that are being made here. So you may feel that you and this person just kind of connect on the same frequency, that you have a lot of the same goals in mind, that you share a lot of the same interests, that you just have, like, this really deep connection. And so it's almost like, there doesn't have to be as much effort that you're intentionally putting into it because it just flows so seamlessly. And then we're going to get for this High Priestess card. The Three of Swords. And so with that, moving forward, I think what this means is that this connection is really drawing on the past experiences that both of you have so that like it's 
It's like being aware of the things that hurt you in the past and them being aware of the things that hurt them in the past, you know, and being able to tune in to that knowledge and be present in that knowledge um, in order to shape this connection into in a way that like avoids any of that, you know? Like, or being able to compare this and going like, hey, this isn't anything like, you know, my last relationship because my last relationship, I don't know, my boyfriend cheated on me and he didn't have a job, you know, and I think this is like being able to go, okay, so this is, this is different from that situation. And that can be something that helps like help you overcome this, this concern with the lovers and the page of wands and the page of pentacles in reverse, I feel like the way that this is moving currently is it's, it is more of, because both of these are pages, you know, they are the beginners, they are the enthusiastic um, students. And it's interesting because like we have this page, the page of wands, and this page, the Page of Pentacles, and the Page of Pentacles looks significantly older than the Page of Wands. Page of Pentacles is probably like 16, 17, 18. Page of Wands is like eight. <laughs> uh, and Wands is about creation, you know, and the Pentacles is about like making an investment, being practical, and, and Wands are about like, you know, everything our imagination can come up with, which is very much like this manifestor energy. And the lovers can be a card of destiny, you know, like we, we have with this swan here. It can also be a card of decision making. And it's interesting because this card over here with the partners talks about how relationships can help us achieve enlightenment and growth. Whereas the story of the lovers in, in the fool's journey is when the fool meets their counterpart and they fall in love and they have this great life together. And then there comes a point, 4141, that um, they have to make a decision. Like, I was on this path towards enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment. Um, and is that something that I want to continue? Because if I continue that, my partner has said that they are not equipped to come with me like this is where they want to stay this is the end of their journey for now so I would have to move on without them but if I stay like I get to keep this person with me I get to physically be near the person that I love so much but then I sacrifice like my spiritual trajectory and so at the end of the story the fool and their partner um, part amicably, you know, and have the utmost respect for each other, love for each other, and they appreciate the time that they have spent together and just wish each other well, you know? So it's kind of interesting we have this juxtaposition here. So it's almost like, you know, with this, with this relationship, you know, there may have been people in the past where you, or this, you know, person A or person B had to choose to walk away from somebody so that they could grow. But it's almost like, you know, in this connection, there can be growth together. Um, but I think it's going to be heavily driven by passion and creativity. It might not always be the most practical. But then we have the four of wands with the ten of pentacles. Like this is fucking amazing, you guys. This is the dream outcome. The Four of Wands can be seen as like a Twin Flame card or 11-11. You know, it's it's the construction of um, the ultimate like construction of a project or creation of a project. You know, it's it's got the four pillars. It's stable. It's steady. And then you have the Ten of Pentacles, which is financially abundant, practically abundant. Even though over here we're like... I don't know. Things aren't necessarily so practical. We've got all of these other, um, all of these other pentacles in reverse. And somehow you still end up with the fucking ten of pentacles. How? How? Tell me, pile number two. <laughs> 
So it does seem that this could potentially result in a union, um, especially like if you guys aren't together and you're just kind of investigate invest you know investigating the connection. I think this could lead to the next level. Um, and if marriage or commitment, because the two are not interchangeable necessarily, <laughs> is something that you want, you know, whether that's a monogamous connection and commitment or like an E&M relationship or a poly relationship, you know, whatever commitment looks like to you, you're going to get it. Like this is the ultimate family card. Okay. Um... It is interesting that we don't have we don't have any like water cards here. Although I want to say that maybe the high priestess is control like is she cancer? Pisces maybe. Um but a lot of this is driven by passion and fire, a little bit of earth energy. So now we're going to get a look at what the universe has to say about this connection. And so with that in mind, pile number two, I would say, you know, cause we're looking at what the, where this connection is going. Um, and this can be very exciting. I would say on that note, like, don't worry about anything that you may or may not have to do. You know, because like sometimes if, if we want to secure a certain outcome, we're like, oh my God, what do I have to do to, to get this? Um, this is the way it might turn out based upon the current present energy, which doesn't mean that you'll never have to make another decision or have a serious conversation or whatever. It just means like, you know, allow it to come naturally. Like don't try to force it. Okay, so we have the chaser with chaser in codependent relationship, fear of abandonment issue. But it was in reverse. So that to me signals that the interactions here are reciprocal. That nobody is running, nobody is chasing. Um, yes, one person may be able to give more attention than the other at one point in time. But overall, like... This seems to be a, a relatively healthy dynamic in terms of communication. You know, it's a give and take. It's like the six of pentacles, you know. We've got talking with interested, conversing more, awaited message arrives, text, call, email, hoovering. I don't know what the hell hoovering is. Maybe like the hoover is a vacuum. <laughs> I think my brother used to sell them when he was younger. It might have been a different vacuum. Um, They might have said hovering, but I don't know. But overall, like this to me signals like that there is going to be continued communication. There might be more long distance communication coming right now. Um, perhaps like the two of you do live in separate locations. Otherwise this could be that maybe one or both of you are more tied up, I guess, in other responsibilities. So you may not be able to physically see each other and communicate too much. Um, so at the time you might have to um, be content with long distance communication, forms of communication. Also, if you are expecting a message, um, then it's coming, you know, and then we're going to get like one or two more about what the universe has to say about this connection. Wedding rings, oh my God. Union, wedding, married, soul connection, eternal love, everlasting promise. You guys, this could be the one. And don't get freaked out by that, okay? Just be who you are because apparently who you are is like exactly who this person wants. You know, and any changes that that may have to happen, you know, be at your discretion. Like if you feel something needs to be talked about or something needs to change or you need to do something differently, like 
use your judgment on that, you know, or like if something arises as a conversation. Um, but as of right now, everything looks fine. Um, palm tree, stability, security, permanence, growth, endurance, and flexibility. It was in the reverse, though, and I don't think that's necessarily anything negative. Um, I do think that's just kind of a caution that, like, because we do have so many pentacles in reverse here that the practical may not be enough of a focus, you know? And especially if this is a new connection, you probably will grow into that, you know, like that's something that'll come around once like all the butterflies and sleepless nights and stuff and pounding heart, you know, kind of settle down. Um, it could also mean that like in this connection, um, stability isn't always present. Because there may be more of a focus on like passion and desire. Um, you know, so I what I think of is like couples who really, really love each other. And they support each other. Um, but maybe they struggle financially, you know. And so that's just something I think to be aware of. But I don't think it's detrimental to this connection at all. So let's get some advice from the universe. Woo, we've got quite a few. And I'm going to take them all. We've got Get Centered, which says, When it gets to be too much, whatever it is, I close my eyes and return to my center. In my center, I have the wisdom and tranquility of a blank, your favorite animal, holding a blank, magical item, floating through space on a blank piece of furniture. So if you get kind of stressed out or overwhelmed, especially like because we have this traffic cone caution card, you know, just, just meditate a little bit, help, you know, do some breath work. Personal growth says, as I move toward greater consciousness, I feel old thoughts and habits fall away. Like training wheels on a bike, they helped me get to where I am. But now that I can ride, I don't need those slow and crummy wheels, except when I'm making bike analogies. So there may have been like, defensive behaviors or techniques that you may have developed or like protective ones and as you get more comfortable in this relationship those are going to be able to be discarded um and anything that's like just kind of the maybe masks that you might be wearing in this connection at first because it's so new um potentially or like it's renewing or whatever um things like that are going to fall away as you get more comfortable with each other and then says don't take it personally if someone starts to speak unkindly to me, I'll remember that they've got something going on that has nothing to do with me. Like, maybe they just pooped their pants. Yeah, that's probably it. And so that might be, like, I don't really get that the two of you are going to argue too much. Um, it may be outside influences that are being negative in the universe. Is like, you know what? Just understand that has more to do with them than it does you. Um, ooh. We've got the two lollipops here, so that could be representative of children. It could also represent, like, sweethearts or being sweet on each other. Um, this is so interesting because we've gotten so many pairs. Two leaves, so I look at this as, like, prosperity um, and growth. And with these both being two, you know, you can definitely think of this as, like, a soulmate or a twin flame connection. We have the anchor... And so we've talked about not necessarily having like a practical foundation, but I do also think that what this represents is that there is going to be like, hmm, like you guys aren't going anywhere, you know? I mean, because even in, even, even when like the anchor is down, a ship may not be the most stable because of the way that the ocean moves, you know? But it's, unless the anchor thing snaps, you know, the boat's going to stay where the anchor is dropped. And so I think that even if they're going to be rocking, if there's going to be any rockiness in your relationships, I think that for the most part, you know, you're still going to be able to like stick together and come to terms with everything. And then we have the elephant. And so I'm thinking of like India or Asia that may be significant for some of you. Um, 
this one has like the little saddle or rug on it on top so that could talk about like glamour nobility um elephants are also highly intelligent they have a really good memory um and like the matriarchs run the herd so the more feminine energy may kind of be the one who's more in charge and also they're just heavily compassionate but they are forces to be reckoned with like you don't want to piss off an elephant so group number two i am so excited for you i hope this helped in some way if it resonated i would love to know how in the description box down below if you would like a private reading from me then you can find my information Wait, I said description box. I meant comment box, like in the comments below. <sighs> I've already said so many words that I've forgotten half of them. Um, you can find my contact information in the description box down below, though. And um, if you liked this reading, please give it a thumbs up. And that'll help me get a little bit more exposure. Also, if you haven't and would like to be a part of our family, you could always subscribe to us, to me and hit the notification bell and be alerted to whenever I upload a new video. So, bye. Last but not least, we have group number three with the card 26, Fence and Boundaries. Um, I was telling Pyle too this, that normally I don't like to show cards um, such as these as as the ones that you would pick because i feel like you know sometimes we can get spooked when there is a card that's visible that's like you know not the happiest or expressing like the most abundance but i had just i don't know i had felt it was this deck in particular for this reading was um, gonna be very useful. Okay, so, um, what are we doing? We're gonna start with person A and just lay them out. So we've got number two, the benefactor, affirmation, I enjoy life now as I take steps to realize my new tomorrow. <clears throat> we've got the card safe travel, number 30. We've got number 35, the cypress tree and equilibrium. And then we have the card 26. It says bliss is worth creating from scratch out for scratched out from. And it was in reverse. And then we're going to just lay out person number B. Number <laughs> person B. Um, we have this card number 27 with the fighters. The affirmation, I fight my resistance to accepting the dualities of life. We have card number three with magic. And we have card number 27 with the Judas tree. And it says seduction. And then card number 44 that says magic happens when you most expect it. I am just going to step a few feet away to grab my water, my flavored water, and I'm back. Now, I do want to start with person A, but there are a few things that I kind of want to show. Talk about that, that matches between them. Um, so, with all three piles, person A... Um, was represented by an inverse card from the that from the creator's oracle, the sacred creator's oracle, which is like the challenging aspect of like how the person needs to initiate self care, and then person B was always with their creator's oracle card represented in the upright position which is the essential meaning or, you know, like the gift aspect. So it seems like in all the piles, there may be some resistance from person A, or there may be some kind of complication or roadblock that exists within person A or their life. Uh, we also have two of these trees that are 
Jack. Buddy, you don't need to. No. Go lay on the couch. Um, I just got this tree deck and they are split into, with this deck, it's split into two courts. You have the heaven court and you have the earth court. And both of these trees are representative of the earth court. Um, the last pile was as two, but I got them mixed up. I saw four, four. Um, and had related them to the heaven court. But to me, that shows that there is a certain level of mirroring here or similarities. Also, I would say with this benefactor card and with the fact that we have fence with boundaries here, this, if you haven't already watched it, you may want to if you're comfortable with it. Um, otherwise, it's just maybe extra confirmation. In my last sexy time pick a card reading which was like the you know your first time with them there was pile number two that was represented by the benefactor and there was also a card that talked about boundaries or was labeled boundaries so i think these i think the people represented in this reading could also potentially be the people represented in my last pick a card reading um, as group two, but let's get into it. So person A is represented by the benefactor and there is just a lot going on here. So this individual is encrusted with jewels, has jewels atop their head and has like these silver and gold rings that they're holding from their other hand. So I think this is someone who is either from a well-to-do background or has found success and created that life for themselves. This is somebody who is very heavily focused on career, somebody who is relatively materialistic, you know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, they like to have nice things and they like to feel secure. I think they also like people to notice them. I mean, as we see with the with the jewels all over their clothes. Um, I think that this is somebody who has probably a very well-paying job and they're likely to be some sort of authority figure. <clears throat> Not only because we have all of these jewels, but this character right here is reminiscent of an Egyptian god and so I think that this is someone who may be like a department head or a CEO or a business owner supervisor you know somebody who has people who answer to them and somebody who has a lot of knowledge in their field um, there is I know there's a symbol that's supposed to represent like the Sun God moving the Sun across the sky and then there's also this right here which makes me think of the Taurus symbol but it's representative of an Egyptian goddess who controls the moon and this bridge right here represents the 29 and a half days that it takes for the moon cycle to complete and so I feel like with having a representation of the sun and the moon this person very likely is in touch with both their masculine and feminine side. I feel that this person is pretty well-rounded. And I think that they are somebody who plans extensively. You know, this bridge representing the passage of a month. This person probably keeps a pretty tight schedule. And it could be just to help them stay organized. Or it also... I don't know where I was going with that other than that to stay organized. <laughs> and then the Eye of Horus is here, which is representative of um, being, being observed as we exist, you know, and how our current deeds um, determine, like, how we will be treated in the future. 
And so I think this person is very much in the public eye or is aware that others are watching. Um, it could even be their higher self, like their conscience. And so I think they are somebody who is committed to doing positive things and trying to be like the best person that they can be. Um, I think they also are somebody who knows how to network very well. And so they probably have a lot of connections. And then we've got this safe travel card here. Now with it being green, I do feel like it's not easy being green. Um, sorry. I do feel like this person for as like practical as they appear to be. I think this person is also really heavily um, like heart chakra centered. I think they do things from a place of like emotional attachment. Um, this is also a rune that is just designed to help keep a traveler safe, whether they're like traveling through the astral plane or through like the sea or through land. And so this person may do a lot of traveling or this could be representative of like the journey that they have uh, been on up to this point. And it's interesting, you know, how we see that there are four, you know, an arrow going in each direction. So I feel like this person has kind of... Um, had their hand in a little bit of everything, you know, they may not have always known what they wanted to do with their life or, you know, how they could apply themselves. And so I think they've experimented a lot in their life. Um, I think they're also just really interested in expanding their circle and their knowledge as much as is possible. You know, this is somebody who, um, may deal with numbers for a living, but then they also might um, become involved or engage with, like, the art community or, like, learning languages and stuff like that so that they can just gain as many connections as is possible and have as many experiences as possible. Like, this is a person, I think, who is always thirsty for knowledge and then we have 35, the cypress tree with equilibrium. And it says, when opportunity is greeted with enthusiasm, success increases naturally. This is somebody who is very excited to, to gain new skills. Somebody who approaches um, situations with optimism, you know, and I think determination, you know, they are a very goal oriented person. And I think there's somebody who is very driven, um, to succeed. There was something with this tree though, that I can't remember. Like I blanked on it. So I just want to take another look. Um, oh yeah. It says, good people will be singing your praises and helping to build your life because the imperishable and immortal Cyprus was worshipped as Diana, goddess of nature. And so I think, once again, this like reaffirms they've built up connections and it does seem like they want a certain level of notoriety. They want to be an important figure. They want to have their name attached to something. We've got this bliss is worth creating from for, or, and then finally from. And so they may look for bliss or gratification or satisfaction from external factors since they finally settled on the term from here. And so that can kind of express that maybe this person doesn't understand how to create bliss from within themselves. I think that they may also struggle to understand how they can include more pleasurable aspects of their life amongst all of the practical 
needs and the practical um, ambitions. And this could even, because this is a heart, this could even relate to love, whether it's, you know, having connections with, uh, having deep connections with friends or being able to spend more time with family, especially if they've got like kids or nieces and nephews or something of that nature. And, you know, otherwise like a romantic partner. Um, there, there were some numbers that I thought were interesting. We didn't have too many like repeating numbers for any of, for either of the other piles, but we have here 30 and then 03, and they're both from the same Oracle deck. And so that's kind of like mirroring images, you know, people who are very similar, but they're also like on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So they can... Where their partner is maybe weak in one area. Well, where this person, where person B is potentially weak or uneducated, person A may be able to fill that gap, you know? Um, and then we have 26 here um, with the Bliss card. And then 26 for the Fence and Boundaries card. And then look at this. We have 27, the Fighters, and 27 the Judas tree. So 26, 26, 27, 27, or 26, 27, 26, 27. Um, yeah, I just think that's really interesting because we, we didn't really have those for either of the other two piles, which was, I was a little bit confused. I'm like, there we have so many different kinds of cards here and we don't have any repeating numbers or any mirroring numbers. Like what's up with, what is, that's not for, what is it? Is it the, the Ray room? No, it's not Ray Romano. Is it from Seinfeld where he's like, what's up with that? <laughs> anyway, person B. Um, right away, you know, it looks like person B is struggling. And I would say for the most part, the struggle is likely within themselves because these are two identical figures. And it does say, I fight my resistance to accepting the dualities of life. This person may kind of struggle with balance. Um, they may tend to view things from a black and white perspective, finding difficulty in the middle ground. They may behave in a way that's representative of one extreme or the other. And so like, for instance, um, their finances, they may have moments where they are spending far beyond their means and then they get to a point where they decide okay i need to save money like i can't do this anymore and so they might end up being really frugal to the point of like i used to <laughs> i used to do this when i like first got my own place but like i was so scared of spending money i wouldn't even buy food for myself and so like my boyfriend's family thought i just couldn't afford food or something and so they were always making me food or sending me home with groceries, um, you know, because they would like get they had food stamps or they would go to, I think, it's the Tree of Life in Mission, South Dakota, I think, um, and get some stuff. And they'd always send it home with me. But like I, I was so scared of not having money that I wouldn't even spend money on basic needs, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they may struggle with their self-worth, you know, they could be in a position where at times they may feel really confident, but then at other times they may feel, um, insignificant. We have these fists that are like positioned toward this heart, you know, and so they could be very defensive in love. Um, they might even be struggling with allowing themselves to feel hopeful about a con like this connection um, or, or optimistic about this connection or even just in general. And uh, we have these birds right here. And in the book, it talks about how 
these birds have taken sides, you know. We've got these birds falling in the shadow and these birds falling in the light. Um, and so I think this person does have a certain level of balance because they can understand like what positive aspects could be part of a situation and what negative aspects could be part of a situation, but they may struggle to like balance out their emotions. They may struggle with the balance of their head and their heart. Um, and they may struggle in like applying what they actually know. So like if they're looking at this relationship and they're like, everything's been going great. Like this person's been super cool to me. You know, there are no red flags. They might struggle with like not trusting themselves and just kind of waiting for something to happen. And then we have these eyes, you know, and they're pretty far set, but like they're supposed to be, according to the book, representative of being able to see from different perspectives. And I think that's what this person tries to do, but that sometimes they can work themselves into potentially like either a negative thought pattern or like an unrealistic thought pattern even if it's one where the you know it's it's a, it's a good like um like a fantasy you know so uh with this magic card they could potentially be somebody who is more spiritual and since it's purple you know we like tend to think of the crown chakra with that and so they may be a person who practices some sort of magic or believes in a sort of deity or just kind of believes in this idea of something bigger than themselves. And I think that they do try to connect with it. You know, a lot of times when we see a pentacle like this, you know, it's being cast, like being used like to cast a circle um, and it makes me think of like the jewelry that some people may wear or the tattoos they have. And this is a symbol of the earth. And so this person may have a lot of earth in their chart or they may be somebody who can potentially be overly grounded, overly practical, but it's also representative of the different elements. You know, so we have earth, air, water, <laughs> Um, fire and spirit. <laughs> All I can think of is Captain Planet now. Earth, wind, water, fire, heart. Um, but they may see the necessity and the value in all the different elements. Um, and they may try to, in some way, incorporate them into their life. Like, they may not all be equally balanced. Um, this person may, for example, tend to work with or feel connected with, like, the elements of fire and earth. And maybe they're not as connected to, like, water and air. Um, but... They see how everything impacts the other. And if you take one element away, then it offsets the entire spectrum. And then we've got the Judas tree, okay, with seduction. And it says, your own passion may cause you suffering. Keep alert to what is not yet in sight. Danger can be avoided. And so this person may be kind of, at this point in their life, um, a little driven by their hormones and they may be alert to that. They may be aware of that. And with this being the Judas tree, you know, Judas was a deceiver and we have the snake here, which is representative of the serpent in the garden of Eden that deceived Eve and open the door for Adam and Eve to sin and therefore like shift the reality of the world. Um, 
So this person could be wary of other people or of the possibility of love, feeling that like maybe people are potentially deceiving them or because it talks about how <clears throat> Judas ends up regretting his actions and therefore hanging himself. This person could be afraid that if they give in to their heart, if they give in to their passion or into love, that it's like going to to create a noose for themselves, you know, like they're going to hang themselves. Not literally, but in the sense of like, they're creating a trap for themselves. One thing the book does talk about the Judas tree is that they don't really grow very long. Well, very, very tall. And, um, there's like some flowers or whatever that grow around them or on them that are meant to like signify life. And then we have magic happens when you most expect it. And it kind of, you know, looks like little chakra symbols. And so I think this person is trying to find a way to balance themselves. And they're also trying to, to remain optimistic with this struggle, you know, we've got this fear of like, what if I'm wrong? What if I get hurt? But then also like understanding of this is what I want. And if I remain in this negative mindset, I'm not going to get it. Um, it's very frustrating, very chaotic. But. Hmm. That's what I'm getting overall. So, what I want to look at right now is where this, you know, why we're here. Why are we here? You know, we're here because we want to know where this connection is going. And I liked doing it this way because I feel like not only can we understand, like, who the people are intrinsically, but we could potentially understand the goals that they have in life. Um, and maybe the hurdles that they are experiencing, which can, can kind of help illuminate the, what, what's leading, you know, what energy is kind of directing towards this, this, um, outcome. And of course, energy is always changing, especially when you have more than one person involved. Whew. All right. So what do we have for group three? What, where is this connection going? And both up like pile one and pile two were vastly different. So I'm interested to see how this one results. So, hmm. Okay, the King of Cups in reverse. Where is this connection going? Where is this connection going? We have Huh. I'm going to take it as the High Priestess in reverse with the Four of Pentacles in reverse clarifying it. Hmm. Where is this connection going? The Eight of Wands in reverse with the Seven of Swords. Where is this connection going? The Five of Pentacles. Where is this connection headed? Where is this connection going? Justice in reverse. Okay. This is... Well, that was just rude. I'm going to put it back in the deck. We got the tower here. Upright. 
Oh, and I didn't even talk about... So with the fence, okay, sorry guys, this was should have been the first thing. I just kind of got straight into it. Um, the energy of this connection as it stands, there may be barriers between the two of you. And um, so there may not be communication or there may be limited communication. Like maybe you're not able to really physically engage with each other. Um, if there are any hardships in this connection, there may have been boundaries that were needed to be established. And if this is a newer connection, it's, it's more so like learning how to operate with each other, you know, like what the other expects and, um, wants, and then like what their boundaries are and their limits. Oh, wow got the queen of cups clarifying the king in reverse clarifying the king um of cups in reverse let's get this five of pentacles the eight of pentacles in reverse and then let's get justice in reverse clarified the devil in reverse with the three of pentacles upright but hey i do see the six of pentacles on the bottom which is good so this is a little bit a little bit of frustrating energy i wouldn't say that it's bad at all but There definitely um, is mirroring here. This could be a divine counterpart because we do have a king and queen of the same suit. And they're in the same position. I feel that currently where this connection is headed is that both parties are, are a little emotionally closed off. And I think, you know, that's something we can already see here. You know, this person is potentially closed off because they've got so much on their plate that they don't know how to, to fit this into there. Um, and then this person is a little bit closed off because they're afraid of getting hurt. We've got the high priestess in reverse with the four of pentacles in reverse. Now the four of pentacles in reverse can talk about Feeling secure enough to finally relinquish some control over our resources and do kind of like, you know, an exchange. Um, not have to hold on so tightly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because neither one, n neither one knows what's going to happen. And that is intimidating to both of them. Like, what happens if I open up? If I offer um, some sort of stability? You know? And then this Ace of Swords in reverse can talk about, like, either deception, like lies, um, or what I think is just more rep like accurate for this pile is that um a lack of knowledge you know because the high priestess upright like she's connected to so much and she has that insight within herself um she's connected to spirit and so she's confident in the choices that she makes she doesn't always reveal her hand she doesn't always reveal the reasons for why she does something but when she makes a move like you can be confident in that in that move and so I feel like there is also like, you know, just a lack of confidence within each, like in their own selves. Like pile A is not trusting their own judgment. Pile B is not trusting their own judgment. They're not able at this point to really tap in. Um, into their 
into themselves. Then we've got the Eight of Wands in reverse, which can talk about a lack of movement. And then we've got the Seven of Swords, which can talk about like deceptive energy. Um, I do want to see what it's about though. Like what's the Seven of Swords about? Mmm. The Ten of Wands in reverse. It's not really feeling that either one is deceptive. Like, they're not necessarily thinking that, you know, person A isn't necessarily suspicious of person B. Person B isn't necessarily suspicious of person A. It's just more so of, like, this is potentially too good to be true. You know, like, where's the catch? And feeling like there's just something underneath the surface that they just haven't quite seen yet and not being able to trust that they can release these burdens and just go into this connection with with trust and faith they may think that like because of past experiences that right now is not the time to move forward because they don't have enough information and the past has taught them that for as much as they want love and for as much as they want connection, genuine connections just take a lot of effort and a lot of risk. And then we've got the five of pentacles with the eight of pentacles in reverse. And that talks about kind of feeling left out because there's not necessarily a conscious like a conscious effort between the two of them to really work on this connection you know like for instance the guy that i'm seeing you know i won't really be able to see him next i won't be able to see him this week because he's like super busy and i probably won't be able to see him next week because i think you know he has his son and so by the time that i have the opportunity to see him it'll have been like a month you know and so there's not really like this progress being made and it can be frustrating, you know, and it can make you feel like you're being neglected or like, you know, maybe the other person isn't as interested, but I'll tell you what communication goes a long way. Like I had to communicate because like, I was a little concerned and, you know, then you find out like, oh no, they're still interested. They're just like really busy. Um... And then the Justice card in reverse, clarified by the Devil in reverse with the Three of Pentacles. So right now, what it, that's indicating is that there's not going to be any action that, that either person is going to take because there's this lack of trust that, like, the Devil in reverse has no strings attached. You know, with the Three of Pentacles, that would mean, like, hey, you know, we could work this we could work, you know, this could work between us. You know, we could all, we could both be putting forth the effort and, um, mm. we could be like a team, you know, like what this is, like a team. And so I'm not getting the feeling that this is like, the end of this connection especially if this pile is related to pile number two from the last 18 plus reading i did because there was wham bam thank you ma'am you know and it was enjoyable it just in that respect it wasn't like leading to commitment right away you know there was more time that was needed. So it just feels like at this point there is going to be a stagnation. And a lot of that is because person A and person B are trying to temper their emotions surrounding this. They're trying to be cautious. And, and it's cautious to, I think, an extent that is beyond what is required. 
you know. So that being said, I kind of want to see like I, this, I haven't I didn't do this for the other two groups, but I want to see like what the universe wants you to do, like what what focus they want you to have, um, any actions you should take, whether that's toward this person or um, we've got the seven of cups upright. Hey, Spirit, what advice do you have for group number two? The King of Wands. Hmm. What advice do you have for group number three? I think I said two, but group number three. Hmm. And we have, why is it stuck together? The Ace of Wands in reverse with the Nine of Cups in reverse. I'm going to switch those. And then I want to get clarifiers for this. Because this could be, you know, Seven of Cups could potentially mean, like, consider other alternatives um, for romantic partners. But it could also just be, like, focus on other areas of your life. The things that you enjoy. Because the Seven of Cups is a very pleasurable, daydreamy frame of mind, you know? So. Okay, yeah, yeah. King of Swords in reverse. And then. Where do I want? I'm, I don't know what to do with these because I don't know. Well, I'll put them down here. We have the Lovers in reverse with the three of cups and I'm, I'm just going to put them underneath the king of swords in reverse and then the moon with the king of wands um honestly i would say overall this is positive what this indicates to me because i feel that the other person is the one who is being represented as all of these kings. And it's interesting, the only one we don't have is the king of pentacles. And we do have the knight of cups here underneath death card in reverse, which to me indicates that um, at some point there is a, strong possibility that there's going to be a communication of romantic interest um and with the death card being in reverse it seems like it's not somebody new you know it it's going to come from this person but in the meantime you know while this king of swords is in reverse you know maybe somebody that you aren't able to be in contact with as a lot or maybe somebody who um is kind of keeping themselves closed off emotionally and maybe like more logical you know have fun with your life hang out with your friends do things that you enjoy like if you are artsy do artsy stuff if you're physically active like do things that you like that are active um, the lovers in reverse with the three of cups could signify with this um, kind of just keep this connection light for the time being you know because the three of cups is like a fun celebratory friendship kind of experience you know it's not heavy energy it's not like you know professing love to each other it's getting to know each other going out for drinks just kind of lightly texting you know whatever it, this could also just signify like um if you're looking at the lovers in reverse being literally you know it can mean like you might want to just spend time with other people in your life that you can have a good time with. Like your family, if there's anybody, like some families really get along. It's kind of weird, I know. But if there are any family members that you really enjoy or your coworkers, um, your friends, just kind of like keeping those connections um, alive which we should do anyway even when we get into a new connection 
but it might be really helpful for you to invest in other people who you already have like an emotional connection with. Um, and then this King of Wands upright with the moon and upright. To me, what that signifies is like, just be content with not knowing right now, which is hard as shit. And I know that. And I hate being told that. Um, but this person may still have their mind to make up, you know, or like it could just be a lesson for us and being patient and trusting. But this king of wands is very interesting because we have this fire, which is passion, but then we've got this wand that has branches and leaves growing out of it, you know, which signifies like a solid ground. It signifies, um, growth and maturity. And then we have the nine of cups in reverse with the ace of wands in reverse, which to me symbolizes like nothing is going to happen if you don't find joy in yourself. You know, you don't have to be a perfectly healed person in order to have a wonderful connection with somebody. But in this instance, like because of the mind frame that you may be in, um, especially like if, if your person number B, I keep saying number B, <laughs> hi guys, I feel kindergarten. Um, but you may just want to focus on building up your self-confidence and not acting from a place of insecurity. Okay, so we're going to get some objective truths about this connection from the universe. Whatever the universe wants to say. I know this is probably a frustrating message, and I'm going to clue you in on the fact that I think this pile, plus pile two from the sexy time reading, apply to my situation. Because I'm sneaky, guys. Like, it can be very difficult to read for yourself. <laughs> and so, um, sometimes if I have a question I really want to know, I, like, the answer to about my situation, I'll pick a reading that will answer that. Oh, look at this. The dragonfly. Be lighthearted. This three of cups. Finding out. Things coming to light. Adapt, change, and heal. But yeah, I'll be like, you know what? I want this answer to what's going on with me. So I'm just going to do a private, like a, a collective reading on it. And, you know, there's like, I was, sometimes I get kind of worried. I'm like, maybe I'm biased. Like maybe, I don't know. Like if I'm in the, am I reading things right when I'm reading for the collective and I like am thinking that there's a pile for me, and I'll tell you what. With the last reading, I thought pile three was gonna be for me. Okay? Started reading pile two, and I was like, oh, oh, this sounds like me. And then I was reading pile three, and that sounds like a situation my friend is going through. And then I think pile two from this reading equates to pile three from the last one. So that was kind of an interesting experience so I could know that like I'm not I'm not tainting my readings just because like I think a pile might apply to me because like I try to just blindly choose one. Um, boat. Receiving what you need, progression arriving, moving on, and closure issues. So that was in reverse, which it looks like a carrot. Um, maybe we need to work on our eyesight or how we look at things. But or get some nutrients in our bodies. You know, this card is really saying like, okay, so you're not quite moving in the direction that you want to, but this isn't over either. Like you're not moving on, you know, you're just kind of in this stagnant energy. And then we have date, which is meeting someone new, dating, get back out there, plan and set a date. Um, so you may meet someone new that you decide that to pursue a connection with, but I feel for the most of you, like this does mean 
that yes, like you guys are going to go on dates, but there may not be that emotional confession or connection right away. You know, there may still be guards up and apprehensions and, and it's not going to lead necessarily to commitment right away. And then we'll get, oh, clock, need time, takes time, in time. Cycles, time to heal and progress. So, and this was one that almost fell out too. It says not enough. Frustrated in relationship, lack of confidence, self-sabotage, fear, ego issues, and jealousy. But it was in reverse. So the universe is saying like, you are enough. Like you are more than enough for this person. I do think this person does have an interest in you, you know? And especially if you're... Person B, you might be kind of looking at person A going like, oh my God, they're too good for me. No, they're not. Let them make that decision. And from the way I'm reading this, they are not making that decision. I still see this moon card as Sailor Moon. But like she's Jupiter. Um. Anyway, the universe is just saying like, it's going to take time. You know, it's not going to move at the pace that you necessarily want it to. But that doesn't mean it's not coming. You know, it's just there are things that you and or this other person need to work on to heal. And sometimes, you know, relationships can work where, you know, maybe there was like just this intense passion between people and they jump into things like that. That can work out like you can have a lifelong relationship with someone that you have that experience, but Sometimes there are connections that require you to take things more slowly so that they can stay more grounded, you know? Um, we're going to get a mission statement for you. What's a mission statement you want to give to group three, please? Inspiration. There is a voice of inspiration within me. Right now, it's only a whisper, but the more I listen, the louder it will get. Soon it will be a flawless speech voiced by James Earl Jones through a megaphone with a lot of applause. And so I think this is really communicating that spirit wants you to focus on your inner dialogue and how you talk to yourself and how you talk about the situations. You know, if you notice that you're starting to experience anxiety about this connection and thinking like, well, it's never going to work, backtrack that, you know. Find things about the connection that have already worked and remind yourself that you don't know the future right now, you know, and it's it's only not going to work if you don't give it a chance. If you find yourself being degrading toward your, yourself, change it, you know, find the ways that you can acknowledge the positive traits you see in yourself. Um... And even if you're not experiencing anything negative in that point in time, it might be just a good idea to kind of throughout the day intentionally think or say positive things, whether about yourself or situations around you, um, because it, it becomes a habit, you know, especially if we're used to being anxious or downtrodden or whatever like it can become a habit to be a negative thinker and so to break a habit we have to consistently work towards changing it anyway let's get some charms oh we got quite a few okay we've got this television and it does have this you know like the little multicolor code on it which is always you know you would see that sometimes when um a broadcast would get interrupted or would be taken off air abruptly and so i think of this as just like this is a little bit of in interference you know the program will come back the program will resume it's just right now it's off the air for a moment um we have the seahorse which to me is like really about innocence you know they just kind of like float along in the ocean, but also like <clears throat> the men, the male seahorses are the ones who give birth to the babies. Like they, they carry the little babies in their pouch and then they birth the babies. So what that could indicate is that potentially whoever has the more masculine energy within this connection 
um, whether they are male or not, might be the one who is going to be responsible for moving this connection further. We've got the sea turtle, <clears throat> which can talk about moving slowly, but on the same token, they can live a long life. You know, just think of like finding Nemo when they're like, yeah, I'm 150, dude. You know, so there's this potential, even though it's going slowly, although I think in water, sea turtles can probably like book it. Um, <laughs> but that's besides the point. Um, even though it might be progressing slowly, it has the potential to remain durable. And we've got this little jar of love. So I think that's reminding you, like, if you do take medication, um, to take it. But also, like, there's a, the prescription for self-love, you know, even if it's not literal medication. Like, make sure that you are committing acts of self-love. So, because especially when it seems like a connection isn't going in the ways that we want it to and there may be insecurities like we start to doubt ourselves but we really you know i mean things are just going to take a while longer than you'd expect we have the dolphins in a pair and so that makes me think of soulmates and being lighthearted, you know having fun together um, we have the scissors, which, hmm, I think of it as like cutting the cords of doubt, you know, like, like sometimes we use scissors when we need to trim something, you know, and not change the entire like picture or creation, but just to like adjust it a little bit so that it fits within the situation better than what it did and then we've got the starfish which I look at as a symbol of regeneration you know and understanding that what seems cut off or damaged or non-existent will regrow you know so and it's really interesting we have so many water symbols so water may be significant. You may live near the ocean. They may live near the ocean. I mean, it could be like New Zealand, Australia, or just coastal regions. Um, but it could also mean that, you know, maybe some of, one or both of you have significant water placements in your chart. So something to think about. Well, group number three, I hope that this was useful for you. If it was and resonated, I would love to hear how in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in joining our family, you can hit that button and then the notification bell will be alerted as to whenever I upload a new video. Um, I would really appreciate a like on this video so that it'll help me get a little bit more exposure. And otherwise, if you're interested in a personal reading, you can find my contact information down in the description box below. Bye!